hey ChatGPT, write me a raw panel client which connects to this IP address on port 9923 as a TCP client. Initialize the connection by sending list line end. This will put the panel into ASCII mode for us. Raw panel server is what you connect to, uh, and it is a control panel which can send you back commands. And when you receive these, which would look a little bit like this, then they are coming from encoder knobs, which are numbers four, five, and six. And the values after the ENC colon is the number of negative and positive pulses that was it was turned. I want these encoders to change values of bytes we call red gain, blue gain, and green gain. And then as these values are changed, we want them displayed on the panel. And that can be done with this command. And make sure to send a new line every time you send a command. In the sample above, the number 24 shall be the encoder for five or six, blah, blah. This is the fourth component, the joystick fader, this one. And we want to receive commands like these. And after ABS colon, this is the position of the fader. We want this position to be used as a brightness value that adjusts the red, green, and blue gain parameters. The value of the luminance shall be shown in the display on the joystick. And uh, then we want to make this program so that we get some debug information printed out here and there. Also make sure that the commands not starting with HWC are ignored. And whenever we receive these values, we want it to also adjust the background color of the knobs. And that's basically it. So we'll send this off. There we go. Now, as ChatGPT is going to generate some Go code for us, which is more or less done already, uh, I want to introduce you to what we are trying to do here. So we have the RCP Mini, which is a new product uh, Skaho is bringing out in 24. And uh, on this panel, um, it's, it's basically set up as a raw panel here. So let me just stop this uh, fireworks screensaver we have running on it. Now, uh, it has this IP address. So you see the IP address I mentioned is coming out of the panel. And I want to show you how raw panel generally works because there is a TCP server inside of this one. So basically, um, we can use Netcat, Putty, Telnet to connect to the IP address here. I'll do that like this and then the port number. So you see the panel somehow reacted to me connecting to it. And now we see some, some binary gibberish here. That is because by default, raw panels uh, of this caliber will assume that we have an efficient binary interaction. And if I type list, which is ASCII characters, then immediately it will, ah, okay, I think the client connecting to me is one of talking human language, kind of. So actually what happens now is you see these commands that I gave to ChatGPT as I turn encoders, you see these pulses are being sent over by an encoder four, five, and six. And those are the values we are trying to pick up. The other thing I want to show you is Raw Panel Explorer. And that is an application you can download from our GitHub repository. So go for Raw Panel Explorer on GitHub, Skahoy. And if I start this one up, and it's available for Mac, Windows, and Linux, then I, I get this web UI running on a local web server on your computer here. So we see RCP Mini and a bunch of other Raw Panel devices on the network. but. I'll just connect to this. And uh, what I can do from here is to um, pick up some commands for sending feedback to the panel. For instance, I wanted to take one of these knobs and put a color into it. So uh, the first thing you want to do is to turn it on. So there are two components to putting a color, background color onto a knob. You turn it on. You can also have it dimmed. You can have it off. This is actually pretty cool because it means you can set the color separately from the the, the light intensity, right? You can have on, dimmed, on, dimmed for anything, and then the color can be set differently. So that's a clever thing in the raw panel protocol. And now I'm setting the color using the color picker here. Now, the, the result of this is you can see that I'm sending a command over that gives me the color for this knob. And if you press full state, you'll actually see the full state of information I'm sending over to have this sort of feedback on the encoder. And that is what I fed into ChatGPT as well. I just remove this HWC extended and text part because it's not necessary in this case. But of course, if I want to put text onto this, I could basically use these fields and then we could say red gain. This is what I expect ChatGPT will do for us. And then the value could be one, two, three. And you see that is now shown in the display. So essentially, this is the components I fed ChatGPT with. And in my experience, the more precise we can make this description, the better the output will be because sometimes I, I'm pretty sure this, this code is not likely to just work perfectly from the get-go. But if I try to manipulate it afterwards by telling ChatGPT what to change, it's not always as successful. So it's kind of worth it. Now, let's copy this code. 
Oh, wait a second. Ah, okay. <laughs> it is luckily making this happen in Golang. Somehow it knows my preference. I hope it is. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. This is Golang. I was just curious for a moment. So, hey, what is Golang? It is my favorite programming language. It has literally changed my life over the last years. And I just love it so much because it is... Um, it's a language that will compile into binaries for any platform, basically. From my Mac, I can code it. It's super fast. It is uh, type, uh, what is it? type, you know, strong on types. I miss all those words, but it just means that the authoring experience is awesome using VS Code. But we are now copying this over into VS Code, where I will create a new little project in my repo here. Call it uh, mini. All right. And inside of this, I will create a new file and that will be main.go. So we're basically having a new project in here. All right. So let's just open this empty file, paste our code and save it. Nice. And um, actually what we need to do here is to go into this folder, mini, and then I need to run go mod in it to initialize and then I need to call it something I think mini like this okay and then go mod tidy to sort of clean it up go run dot and then we'll see okay so it says undefined connection thingy and that is typically something that happens if yeah see this is actually a little bit weird to me because this connection object is somehow it's created up here, so why is it not brought down into this part of the code? Hey, ChatGPT, you are really not too clever in this case. Um, okay, I will just ask it. Uh, hey, I think you forgot. Oh, actually, I can kind of just send this over and it will probably figure it out. Let's try this. I get these errors. <laughs> <laughs> Please fix. So uh, it's it's funny how you can yell at ChatGPT and it's going to be, oh, I apologize, the oversight. And uh, you should declare con variable in the main function and pass it as parameter to these. Okay, here is the corrected code. I'm so thankful. Thank you. Uh, very, very useful little tool here. So, But I definitely see that there's often limits to how far we can take this. Now, it's probably going to run in this case. All right, so what you see is that we're actually receiving the kind of content we would get if, you know, if you remember what I did up here, you know, when I connect it and I type in list, oops, list, I get this information. You see, um, I asked the code to actually print it out in the console so I have a chance to see it. And maybe as I'm moving the joystick, you see it is uh, receiving these commands, but it is passing the encoder error. Input format does not match format. Mm. Okay, let's try this one up here. Um, so it's outputting this, but it is apparently, oh, yo, 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 you see, actually red and blue gain is adjusted. You see, it's already doing this internally. That's super cool. But there's something about my fader, which is not working correctly, really. Now, um, okay, great. Uh, but it is also not updating the panel as I want. So, okay, it got some part of the way here. So what do we need? Uh, I think at this point, we would probably see if we can figure out what is happening in the code. I also want to share with you the code so that you get inspired to try out Go because it's really cool. And by the way, if you really want to work with raw panel and using Go, you're probably likely to use some of the libraries we have that will help you with that. It's it's in a different video, should be. But um, it is quite, you know, this is like very hacky cowboy style of doing things where the first thing that happens is we make the connection over to the panel. So that's easy and done. We initialize with this so it gets into ASCII mode. And then basically the program is running this um, little loop where it is scanning for commands received from the panel. And we get it written out into the console right here. So it is now saying if we see this prefix, then pass the encoder value from the command. And then, uh, yes, yeah, so... Um, probably what is happening is that this will actually get called before this one. Um, so because this will match also this one, this is the reason why we get into trouble. Actually, we need to move these two parts around. Uh, we could even ask ChatGPT to do that. But now that we see it, let's not waste too much time on, on this. So we'll just change these two around. Now, um, it's definitely a hacky way of doing it. But uh, basically, this would first detect this, and then it would assume these down here. 
Then it is processing the encoder, so it seems to do so fine, but something is happening because then it prints out the values, which is very useful debug information for us. We can just comment it out if we don't want to see it at the end. But um, the display command it is giving me, I'm not super happy about that. And the encoder value, the luminance control is inserted here, so that all looks kind of good. But um, I'm not sure I'm, I'm happy with this. I think this is actually the problem that I'm trying to insert that line break at the end. And that is really not how it's supposed to be. So uh, if I am not mistaken here. <sighs> So actually, I think it's better to just do like this. All right, it has to do with whether the backslash n is interpreted as, you know, I want the character 10, ASCII number 10. So I'll, I'll just add it to these command strings like this. So actually, this may be the fix that we need. Let's try it. All right, so I'll just run this again. And um, then, <laughs> okay, guys, look at this. Um, something is working. And that's pretty nice. Uh, this is not working just yet, but at least I'm receiving these values and it is not yelling at me anymore with respect to those. So um, let me see, red, green and blue game. Probably they are set up as global variables, yes. And the luminance control is global as well. It means that they are accessible from other parts. So as I am, as I am, increasing, decreasing these. Uh, by the way, what happens if I go all the way to the bottom? Yeah, okay, fine. It's not exceeding the limits. That is a good thing. And why is that actually? Because I'm just changing the value here. So I can go negative. I go negative here and negative numbers shouldn't be allowed. Okay, so there's a little bit of cleaning to do. Basically, you would like to say stuff like if um, if blue gain is less than zero, blue gain equals zero. You'll, you'll want to do s things like this for red and green and blue gain. That would be red and let's do it here as well. Green. All right, so we can just quickly check. And then if I turn the encoder the wrong way, you see I can turn it up, but I can't get it into a negative position. So that's great. Um, probably I, you basically need to make the same for the upper end of the range as well. Okay, now um, I also get, do I get the values into the display? No, I don't. It says 1000 and that is not what I intend. So it's the luminance control it's putting out here. <laughs> yeah, um, it is It's kind of messing up things to, all together, but um, let me see. So the... Let me see, the command we are sending to set the color of the background should actually be, you know, again, depending on which one of these encoders is. So it is a little bit like I should actually sort of split this up. And of course, in a, in a real scenario, we would have to divide these things in a way, you know, into functions and so on. So the code is, is, uh, is much more cleverly built. Um, for instance, we would have a separate function to basically do this. And um, do we want to do it? Ah, too much work for this video. But I think the main point that I want to convey to you guys here is that it's very helpful to get this far, already having stuff in the displays, being able to change the colors of the buttons and knobs and so on. And there's definitely a limit to how far ChatGPT can take you in having the exact result that you want. But getting this far, and being able to modify from here with the logic you know that you need is really, really significant. So, um, you know, I, I love this kind of help that it's giving me. It's it's a pretty clever assistant, but it is an assistant. So I still need to be in charge of, of the real thing. Now, process the fader. Um, we want to check why we also have issues down here. And once again, it looks like it just mistook the significance of the in here so let's just do this all right because the thing is as we are so it says luminance and these things so let's just check the fader and see if the fader would work now and actually the fader does so in the display you see the value that we expect although that value is sort of changing ah 
Okay, so it's kind of looping around from zero to 100. And why is that? That's kind of funny. Uh, it's also doing things with the red, green, and blue gain because it is taking this. Okay, so it's taking the position and multiplying it. It's, it's, it's right. Luminance control is then dividing by the existing. Ugh. Ah. No. No. <laughs> what? No, 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 no. Uh, what's going on? Uh, first of all, it is putting the luminance control up here, which is okay. I am sick and tired of that. I want to have this um, display value. Okay, I'm just going to put in a display value, which is so I, m I make a variable here. Variable display value. Whoops, sorry. Display value string. All right. Um, uh, uh, integer. All right. So that, that's going to be easier for me just real quick, because then green gain and for the blue gain, I'm basically setting a variable temporarily here so that in my display output, I just paste that in and then I should get the true values up here as as I'm adjusting those. OK, but um, what happens? Luminance control. Ugh. The position I'm getting, that's actually what I want luminance control to be. Okay, you've totally misunderstood this. Equals position. All right, so I want to do that. No, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> position times luminance control divided by 1000. Okay. So now I basically have the percentage calculated correctly. Nice. And then let me see position should then be luminance control. Now that is fine. So we get that shown. Okay. And then I mean, at this point, it's going to change red, green and blue, but it's not going to update this place up here before I turn the encoder up. So that is going to be the limit. Now, let's see if this one, ah, it is still sort of counting funny ways. And why is that? Okay, so we could essentially um, do our, no, wait, let me see. We are getting these, let me print this one out, value. I want to see, whoops, I want to see what's coming into this function. Okay, so that that value is kind of funny. Yeah, it is it is actually giving me funny value. Uh, why are you doing this to me? Process fader. Let's just see what's coming out of this guy. Giving me everything after 12. How many characters do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Why don't we try this? All right, because that could sort of explain why it is it's so strange and weird. OK, so once again, you cannot trust ChatGPT for everything. And in this case, it failed. Of course, if we pointed it out, it would correct its error and say, I apologize for the oversight and we would probably be good. But now uh, you see the value is uh, coming along as it's uh, supposed to be. And let's turn the encoders. We see this is for the red. This is for the green and then we have the blue value over here so those things are also in place now pretty amazing tool um hope you were inspired to work with raw panel yourself it's so easy to set up some sort of client that can work with your uh, skyhoy panels in this way making them useful for more than uh, using reactor inside of them and if you wondered what a panel like rcp uh, mini would uh, often be used for let's quickly visit the panel or was it this one RCP Mini Pro, yes, okay. So you see that we have on the panel, this is the web UI of the panel, we have hardware manager enabled, which is listening on port, not on the socket, but what is uh, the, the typical mode of our panels is that they are listening on internal socket. The moment I do this, you'll see that it's losing connection. Oh yeah, okay, you're not seeing it because it's not, oh yes, it is restarting, that's nice. All right, so it's actually now listening for internal information and I would need to, um, search for Reactor, which is our panel management software that runs on these panels. And if I start Reactor up, then we'll see Reactor is going to overtake the panel now. 
And that is the usual way it's working. But you see that already by default, our panels are ready to talk to the world around them. And uh, most of the time, they are actually used internally. So the internal engine that we are using externally is also used by Reactor, which is in this case running a profile for RCP Mini, having a ton of DreamChip cameras associated with it, which you can choose between here, paging multiple cameras and so on. So this is something I did another day and uh, working as a an RCP for these cameras. It is also possible to combine these two things. Should we try? It's a, it's, I don't, I don't know if it's gonna work, but okay, we, we can do it. We can do it. So we just disabled raw panel for this one in, in general. I mean, if, if we try to connect to it right now, if I, if I try to do this connection, you know, I, I'll just get rejected and our little Go application won't be able to connect. So we are essentially in a place where it's like either or, either we run reactor or we run raw panel. But there's a way we can try to add raw panel to it. So if we search for raw panel here, maybe we have a yeah, core Skahoy raw panel. That's the one I was looking for. So let's just try this one out and install this. Okay, um, I'm tro totally freestyling. I've been that during the whole video, by the way. So it's not that I tested ChatGPT before I tried. Uh, I just hoped, assumed, and freestyled. So if we add, uh, yes. So we um, we need to add raw panel server core. I hope this is the one. Yes. Okay. So um, what we want to connect to is. Oh no, wait, it's port 93. So we're creating a raw panel server here. All right. And I think use embedded topology. Constraint to topology variant. Okay, what does it say? If said, the device will only allow triggers and feedback for hardware component IDs which are compliant with the topology of the panel. And the topology of the panel that we can use is found in this list, which doesn't have RCP mean in it because this is not a released panel just yet. So maybe we'll not constrain the topology. Training mode, no, okay, I think we'll just save, okay? So, and it is there, it is ready. So can we actually connect to it? Let's try, all right? So what happens if we connect? We are connected, we type in list. Not so successful, but I'm also connecting to the wrong thing. And how could that suddenly happen? Let's just try this list. Okay, XP core. So probably, um, yeah, nothing is gonna happen when I turn encoders just yet because I need to go over to configuration and then I'll probably use the cool Reactor 2.0 user sections. And the user section is like on top of everything, I can sort of do my own. And then on this one, I would put in raw panel server yeah, let's try encoder action and see what happens. And this would mimic, yes, hardware component ID four. Let's try this over here. Say this would be number five. So you see, I can basically now customize which numbers are being used to ID these components. And then let's try our fader. Ah, okay, it's accepted. Um, yeah, so for the user section here, this the, the Irish joystick is, is not included for whatever reason, but at least these are. And uh, I think if we can go back to our terminal and we should be able to see that we're actually receiving these encoder pulses over. So that's great. I am now curious to see, can we actually run our script on top of this? And it seems it's connected and things should be fine. Okay, let, let's try it out. Ah, did it just crash? No, can we run it? Can, oh, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it exiting? Of course, guys, it's too weird and annoying when I stumble into a problem like this. I fixed a bug in the device core for the raw panel. So now it actually does work. I just tested that using my um, my client here, which is um, the connection to the XP underscore core, which is the raw panel implementation that gives us just access to these three knobs on the board. So what we can do now is getting back to our business and run our application. So let's see what happens. We see our red, green and blue works. Alongside having a panel that is actually 
working with Dreamship cameras, we now captured, we hijacked three encoders on this one for our own purposes using raw panel device core, also our own little Go script that would facilitate the connection between whatever endpoint we have over here. Like it's probably values that you wanna control something with, right? I don't know what that is. In this video, we did not care about it. We just focused on how to work with the raw panel protocol in a hacky quick way. Hope this was inspiring to you. Please subscribe to our channel. And um, this is the best way definitely to follow all the news from Skahoy.